Welcome back to Top 5 Scary. I'm your horrifying host, Kyle McWaters. And did you know that there's a void in the Atlantic Ocean in which when things enter, they don't exit? Some say it's gas bubbles, some say it's magnets under the water. Hunker down dudes, because here's the top five terrifying stories about the Bermuda Triangle. Number five, USOs. In the past 500 years, at least 50 ships and 20 aircraft have vanished in the triangle. Majority of them without a trace, like no trace. No bodies, no sunken ships, nothing. Many have disappeared in calm waters too, without having even sent a distress signal back home. The Bermuda Triangle is scary because it's a general area of Atlantic Ocean between Bermuda, Florida, and Puerto Rico. So that's a pretty huge distance. This hot spot of activity regularly sees many ships and aircrafts traveling through it. In fact, it happens every day. So it's not like a total black hole thing, but it's weird. Our first recorded recount seems to take us back to Columbus on his travels. Some of the earliest tales come from him and his crew. During his first journey across the Atlantic Ocean in 1492, Columbus apparently reported seeing really strange sightings in and around the triangle. Apparently, he wrote the stars appeared to move around in the sky. Yeah, they're not supposed to do that. Could have been the waves on the ship, who knows. Another was that Columbus saw a light candle moving up and down in the distance. When he asked his crew to look at it, it would vanish and then reappear over and over again. The strangest thing that Columbus said was that he saw a glowing object coming out of the water and shoot up towards the sky. He wrote in his longbook a haywire compass, strange lights, and a burst of flame falling into the sea all took place at the triangle. I don't know about you, but I'm the UFO guy around here, and this screams UFO all over it. Actually, it screams USO, unidentified submerged object. Things in and out of the water, bright lights moving around. 1492, people. What was going on back then above the skies of the water? Number four. X-Men. Launched in May of 1910, the USS Cyclops was a Proteus class of Collier built for the United States Navy by William Cramp and Sons Company. Colliers are huge cargo ships designed for transporting coal. However, the Cyclops was hauling manganese ore, a material much denser than core, which could lead to something interesting theories about her disappearance. In 1918, the cursed vessel left port in Rio de Janeiro, heading for Barbados. Unfortunately, things seemed to get a little spooky though, with the voyage never being seen again. Yeah, named Cyclops after a race of giants from the Greek mythology, she was huge and heavy. So what happened? Skeptics believe that due to the amount of weight it was carrying, that it must have sank or cracked. But that doesn't explain the 306 missing passengers, zero distress calls, zero wreckage found from the United States Navy. The loss of a ship and crew still remains the largest loss of life at sea the history of the United States Navy ever endured, not directly involving combat. The Caribbean Sea creates huge areas of shallow water that can be treacherous to ship navigations. And there's some evidence to suggest that the Bermuda Triangle is a place where magnetic compasses point towards true north as opposed to magnetic north. Could explain why so much metal like all that ore and coal might have pulled the ship down from the magnetism. But what's so magnetic under the sea? I think the US Navy owes some odd 306 people's families an explanation. I'm looking at you, Freedom of Information Act. Number three, Top Gun. Flight 19 was the group of five Avenger torpedo bombers that disappeared over the Bermuda Triangle on December 5th, 1945, after losing contact during a United States Navy overwater training flight from Fort Lauderdale. All 14 airmen on the flight were lost, as well as all 13 crew members of a Martin Mariner, which was a search and rescue boat that went looking for Flight 19. Neither of them to be seen again. Flight 19 was flying a routine navigation and combat training exercise. Top Gun's up there training the rookies, you know? The flight leader was a United States Navy Lieutenant Charles Taylor. Navigation of the route was meant to teach dead aerospace principles to students, like using your surroundings instead of your instruments. A little calculating on the fly. Radio conversations between the pilots were overheard in the area. The radio transmissions were as followed. Quote, I don't know where we are. We must have got lost after that last turn. Both my compasses are out. I'm trying to find Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm over land, but it's broken. I am sure I'm in the Keys, but I don't know how far down. We are heading 30 degrees for 45 minutes, then we will fly north to make sure we are not over the Gulf of Mexico. Taylor was told to broadcast on the search and rescue frequency. Taylor replied, I cannot switch frequencies, I must keep my planes intact. And that's it, forever. In 1991, a group of treasure hunters thought they finally solved the puzzle when they swam over watery graves of five World War II era planes near Fort Lauderdale. Unfortunately, it was later found that they belonged to a different group of Navy planes whose serial numbers did not match. 
The search continues to this day with no signs of the six aircraft or 27 crewmen. The United States Navy simply doesn't lose six planes with Navy members on board. So what exactly happened in 1945? Number two, Dwarf Panthera Tigris. Star Tiger was an Avro Tudor IV commercial passenger aircraft owned and operated by British South American Airlines and disappeared without a trace over the Atlantic Ocean while on a flight between the Azores and Bermuda. I kind of already know where this thing's going. On January 30th, 1948, Star Tiger took off from the Azores in order to complete the last leg of a flight from London to Bermuda. This, unlike the Flight 19 crew, was not a military plane or exercise. Prior to takeoff, the plane had some problems with a heater as well as malfunctioning compasses. Probably not a good start to the whole Bermuda Triangle trip, huh? The plane continued on its original schedule behind a weather plane that served as a lookout for signs of coming threats. To keep the plane at a warmer temperature, they flew extremely low at 2,000 feet, eliminating virtually any sort of wiggle room for a problem if it should arise. Keeping the plane cool, the low altitude caused the plane to burn fuel much faster than if it had been flying high using fall as fuel. When the weather plane landed and was not immediately followed by the Star Tiger, ground control began to worry. Minutes turned into hours and rescue crews searched and searched, but no luck. All 25 passengers and six crew members were never seen or heard from again. I'm kind of shook right now, to be honest, like I'm baffled. Investigators conclude that the whereabouts of the plane, a life jacket, or even a single piece of glass has yet to be found related to the Star Tiger. And the number one spot, Lady Sylvia. This one I chose for number one because it gives us a little tiny clue as to what might have happened out there in this geometric nightmare. In 1976, a 180 meter or 590 foot cargo ship named Sylvia Elosa embarked through the waters. She was carrying 37 passengers along with a huge shipment cargo of iron ore. Remember now, this thing is almost two rugby pitches long, okay? 200 meter sprint to the other side. The ore was being shipped from Brazil to Philadelphia, but unfortunately, like pretty well all the others, the route took Sylvia right into the Bermuda Triangle. Spoiler alert, to which it would never return. No one is certain at what exact time the ship vanished, but when the company that owned her asked the Coast Guard to search for it, after the extensive weeks searching by boat and plane, the rescue teams had found something. Few pieces of debris, including a lifeboat and life jacket with burn marks all over them. Hmm. Okay, so maybe a fire on the ship or some sort of radiation or electrical burn. Maybe they escaped. Apparently when rescue arrived on the scene, they reported seeing a thick black goo, like an oil slick around the wreckage. The New York Times said the biggest mystery of all is that a ship that size wouldn't have sank quickly. A ship equipped with that much haul and budget, the crew should have had time to message for help, but were silenced by this tragic mystery. How come we haven't figured this out yet? Satellite images, James Webb telescope, LIDAR, drain the oceans. So how come we still haven't found these ships? UFO abductions, black hole voids, Poseidon himself, who knows? Definitely seems like something strange to say the least. Well, there you have it folks, five terrifying tales about the Bermuda Triangle that will leave you absolutely shipwrecked. Dude, I haven't been able to sleep since I looked into this stuff. My mind wants to play detective every day and piece all these little clues together. What do you think? Is the Bermuda Triangle some sort of anomaly we can't explain yet? Or is it gas bubbles, mechanical errors, and weather, and it's much more terrifying than we originally thought? Beats me. Until next time, turn the lights on, lock the doors, and maybe postpone that trip to the Bahamas you've been planning. Just until they figure this out, you know? I've been Comic Waters, and as always, stay spooky, everybody.